Hello and welcome to another episode of Monday Markets. As always, we're brought to you by Woo. Links available in the description below. The same sign up incentive is there, so be sure to check that out, but only once you've read my article to understand what the exchange is about. I should note the exchange is at a transition point at the moment. They are reducing centralization by focusing less on single market maker dominance and instead introducing a sort of market maker or rather designated market maker program. And while that transition takes place, uh, the execution on some pairs isn't as good as it was before, but hopefully the end result, once the designated market maker program is in full flow, will be better execution or at least the same good execution while having less single market maker centralization, which I think will be a net positive. So anyway, lots of fun stuff going on there, always changing. Be sure to check it out. If you have any feedback or comments, leave it in the YouTube or somewhere else, leave it in the YouTube, YouTube comments, of course, uh, and we can just dump it in the boot chat and get it fixed. So lots of stuff going on there. Uh, we like working with them and we'd appreciate if you check them out to support the show. So with that out of the way, uh, leave a like on the video, subscribe, your support in all the normal engagement metrics has been wonderful and let's keep it going. Now let's refer to the monthly timeframe first on BTC. Not a lot has changed, three weeks left until this monthly close. The recurring theme still appears to be the market poking at 30K and struggling. So in terms of recent price action, we poked above previous month's high and rejected, and that's all within the vein of poking at April's high and not having any fun there either. So I think this just shows the absence of a breakout on the higher timeframes for the time being. And nothing else too spicy there, but there is someone just willing to sell at or above 30K rather, and that still seems to be true for the market thus far, as we will discuss on other timeframes. So if we go to the weekly, uh, the picture kind of shows itself, right? So if we take that same April's high, swing high here on the weekly, we have poke close below, poke close below, poke close below, uh, and no weekly close above yet. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I'm not a huge fan of this structure, and that's simply because we had such a strong breakout uh, from this sort of drifty downtrend into ETF candle. And then since then, the market has just not moved an inch. Uh, with these types of moves, you usually expect strong momentum continuation if the market's gonna be strong, or at most one to two weeks of pullback before continuation. But this really seems to have stalled at 30K. So I think it's neutral at best. And even if you're look willing to break out trade it uh, into sort of deeper weekly and higher time frame levels, uh, that breakout trade isn't available yet. And we always need to be aware of the downside, which is if we start pulling back on the weekly more than the poke and consolidate, the earliest reasonable support is at 29.3-ish. Uh, if it's a deeper pullback, we start getting into more precarious territory with 28 and then some, uh, you know, much lower if, if, if that doesn't materialize. So weekly time frame isn't really giving signals per se i think at the moment it's just stuck at the range high uh, so the argument for buying into the range high unless it's been broken or flipped or something like that uh, is definitely tricky or less clear than before uh, i think the daily time frame and the four hour are useful in this regard uh, so again same picture here uh, based on april's high spike 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 uh, as soon as it closed above the next day closed back below and then we had this really ugly daily candle and then we're still stuck uh, stuck between what you might ask uh, well, it's this April high as before, which comes in at around 31K or rather 31K exactly on this exchange. And then the range low is some portion of under 30K, sort of 29.8, 29.4, uh, thereabouts. So essentially, if we take a zoomed out perspective, uh, what we have on the daily time frame is, I mean, this is real chop. It's not the kind of downtrendy chop that people on crypto Twitter call chop. This is real chop. Uh, and the general sort of inference from there seems to be that, you know, one Bitcoin is worth around $30,000. Why? Uh, because if 30000 is our fair value, if the market goes above it, that's a premium and it, it, is, it gets sold. It gets sold rather. Uh, if the market is below it, uh, that's considered to be a discount and it gets bought. And that seems to be the range we're stuck in. Very, very tight. Uh, 30K is like the mean point of control, equilibrium, whatever, which generally means it's a bad place to trade. As for the extremities, at the moment, sellers are showing up when it's rich. Buyers are selling up when it's cheap. Selling up, showing up when it's cheap. Uh, and that really hasn't changed for the last couple of weeks. So you really want to sh see a shift in that type of behavior, I think, before stepping in on a swing basis. Uh, someone overexerting themselves and failing uh, or the market just breaking the range and following through, something of that nature. Because at the moment, the market basically agrees on the price of BTC and it's chopping around that sort of midpoint fair value. And regardless of your kind of trading framework, uh, generally speaking, if this is your fair value, the good trades will come below fair value uh, when it's at a discount to buy or above fair value when it's at a premium uh, to sell. If you're trading around here, uh, especially once you incorporate trading costs, it's very unlikely that you have an edge. So there's nothing particularly compelling uh, on a swing or even sort of mid time frame basis uh, for the moment, I think. Um, 
I'm wondering if I've got anything else to add on the daily time frame. I don't think so. Uh, if we go to the four hour, this is where that range is most visible. Uh, you'll recall for a while we talked about this four hour level at 29.8. Uh, that's been supportive. If you take the highest close on the four hour at 31, that's been resistance. And again, just to sort of uh, make the point one more time, if you take the range low and the range high, uh, you get a sort of fair value or midpoint of 30.5K. So the market agrees for the time being that this is generally expensive at 31 plus it agrees that sub 30 is generally cheap and everything else is just uh, you know fair value essentially um, so until that relationship shifts the market's probably going to continue to be a bit of a nuisance uh, i think you just need to see acceptance or at least a failed attempt at a break at either side of the range so if we have the four hour range the highest close at 31.2 ish as i mentioned our lowest close we can take the first sort of lowest close in the consolidation at 29.8 and that's your range so to get something compelling uh, you want to see someone really step in and try to shift the market now whether that's a break with continuation that would suggest lower prices uh, if it breaks and reclaims you then have a risk defined long uh, and i think essentially the same applies to the range high you know if you see break and acceptance that's probably worth uh, punting on the long side and then if it's a break and back below standard type of failed breakout setup uh, you can probably take it to the other range boundary if not uh, through the range as well so for example if we were to the setups i'm really interested in uh, if we get a failed breakdown at the range low i'd like to buy that and take it to the range high and beyond and the same applies to the other side of the market where if we get a failed breakout at the range high i'd like to take that to the other side and beyond uh, even within the range itself i'm getting kind of fatigued essentially and, and suspicious of how much time we've spent here um i'm not terribly willing to just buy support sell resistance um again i think at this point i'd either want to see a break where price follows delta so the aggressive sellers win uh, or the aggressive buyers win or a or standard kind of range failure setup e everything else sort of playing ping pong within the range i think is sort of nearing its end uh, and i'm going to look for signs of aggression aggression that's either successful meaning the range breaks or aggression that gets absorbed meaning the range fails to break and you play a reversal setup uh, i know that's very boring but hopefully you can i don't need you don't need me to tell you that the market has been boring as well. Uh, so rather than get chopped up, I'm more than happy to wait. You can tell things have been choppy because we're down to the four hour time frame for an episode of Monday Markets. So uh, that's rather telling in itself. I think the broader problem as well is that if you're trying to break out trade this thing, uh, there isn't a ton of space for that breakout. Because if we look at sort of weekly resistance, that comes in at 32.2, 32.3, uh, potentially sort of 33K for a wick. And if we go to monthly resistance, uh, the earliest iteration of monthly resistance is just above 35K. So essentially, even if you end up, again, this is based on a swing type of mindset. So for your lower time frames, it doesn't really matter too much. Even if you end up having a parameter that allows you to break out trade above April's high, so, you know, 31K plus, and at that point, price will have been displaced a fair bit, you know, 31, 32, doesn't really matter. You're not going to be getting the perfect entry if you're breakout trading. Even if you're doing business on the breakout, so above the blue line, uh, sitting on your head are weekly and monthly resistance. So there's a real risk, higher risk than usual, that you're breakout trading into higher time frame resistance, uh, which could then do something like that, which would be very scary. So I think on the long side, it's genuinely very tricky. Uh, because even if you catch the impulse you're catching it into an area where holding longs is going to be difficult because it's into high time frame resistance so really on the long side uh, i think it either has to be sort of very low time frame very locally sort of playing the range and hoping it sticks or playing that failed breakdown that i mentioned about and hoping it sticks or rather uh you want some like a real breakdown into high time frame support to do business which we can discuss uh but you know some version of uh, the earliest version would be 28k uh, and then i mean lower would start to look pretty rough but we can talk about it if we get there uh so it, it's not the case that sort of the setups on the long and short side they're, they're both they both exist they're equal and they're just as appealing to each other uh, i think the long scenario is skewed against breakout trading just because there's resistance above us uh, and if you're a bull it has to be on either sort of lower time frames within the range or you actually want the market to break down which sounds counterintuitive uh, but then you get deeper pullbacks into better levels that are more likely to be risk defined and that sort of creates space 
between the support you're buying and the high time frame resistance. Because if you're breakout buying this, there just really isn't a ton of space before the market gets to choppy levels, unless you're willing to just wait completely and say, you know what, I don't really care about 30K. I do care about sort of 30 to 34K and I'll breakout trade above that. I think that's also reasonable, but obviously this is a weekly show. So we have to focus somewhat on local levels. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky market to pass. So even on a swing basis, I think it's worth being patient here. Um, as far as ETH goes, slightly clearer, at least in terms of the uh, higher time frames. there's still no weekly close above 1935, 1934. Uh, that's rough, uh, and the market's just been choppy there. Uh, the clearer sort of swing trade there is weekly close above there takes you into the next weekly level at 2500. I'm sure you've seen Don talk about this. We talked about it on Casual Friday. That still seems like a reasonable conclusion. Uh, and it still is currently unavailable because the last weekly spiked above previous week's high and closed below the level. So even though it's been like 18 months hyperbole, resistance is still resisting. So that breakout weekly swing isn't available. Now, as far as support goes, where might a reasonable pullback take place similar to sort of um, those higher low potential BTC levels. There is a level uh, at sort of 1800, which is where we had a recent low uh, failed breakdown, which we then reclaimed. Uh, if we look on the daily time frame, as far as that 1800 region goes, it takes us back to one of the older uh, Monday markets levels, which is this cluster here between 1820 and sort of 1790. So landing almost exactly at that 1800 level. Uh, I think as long as that stays as support, uh, and even if it comes in and tests the lower boundary, uh, that's sort of the level that matters. Uh, anything below there would start to look really bad. Because if we look at the sort of uh, localized price action, it hasn't been very good. We know that this is a rejection from weekly time frame resistance. So the weekly time frame is against you. As far as the daily goes, what we've had thus far is if we take this rather self-evident range high, which I think we also talked about on Monday markets, uh, it looked constructive at first, sort of, you know, resistance, resistance, close above, acts as support a little bit. Uh, but then on this ugly BTC day, it just entirely sort of engulfed the move, retraced it and ended up back inside the range. Uh, we actually wrote about this price action here on the technical roundup newsletter, trls.com, where the argument was, yes, it is a daily breakout, but it is into weekly resistance. So that's not a particularly compelling idea. So sometimes you need to juggle timeframes uh, somewhat judiciously. Uh, on this occasion, that paid off, but you know we, we know the weekly isn't on our side. So as far as the daily time frame goes, uh, maybe a reclaim of 1910-ish in this daily range high is another attempt to do this, but successfully. That's plausible. Uh, as far as support goes, as I mentioned, weekly and daily 1800 seems to be important. Um, and we've sort of tested it once on a very kind of shallow dip. Um, trading that, again, would be relevant. The issue is, uh, contextually, you don't want to see any daily closes below the lower boundary. And the reason for that is this support has already been deviated once, right? You have clear support, 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 breakdown that didn't stick. That was a deviation. And so you expect this to act as support again. If it fails and we get a close below it, then our, our standard kind of mantra on the Monday Markets channel, or rather series, comes up that double fake outs are rare. So if you take the 1800 level and assess it contextually, uh, very clear level, already deviated once. If it deviates it again, it's less likely to be a failed breakdown and more likely to be a real breakdown. So that could be a plausible downside rotation scenario. They get a daily close below and the whole thing kind of starts to look stuffed. But for the time being, we have a narrow, fairly narrow range to work with uh, for your short to medium term trading, which is 1910-ish resistance and sort of 1820 to 1790 uh, as your support. And at the moment, we're right in the middle of those two. So nothing terribly interesting there. And I don't think the four hour is going to help us apart from show us what we already know from the higher time frames. One thing to note so that even if you get positive ETH USD setups, it's worth bearing in mind what ETH BTC looks like to make sure that you're not going to be uh, underperforming relative to BTC. Uh, at the moment, there isn't a ton to praise about this thing. If we take the candle closes, uh, it's sort of found resistance at the last low, and, and that kind of remains unchanged. Uh, for some time, or at least initially, the SFP argument was available at the range low that it's going to fail to break down, but that was also mitigated. So there's nothing terribly constructive on the weekly time frame yet for ETH BTC. And just as a contextual reminder, this thing has been making lower highs and lower lows for some time. So you've got a contextual downtrend uh, away from a key level, which looks like it's uh, sort of retesting resistance. Uh, it's it, it doesn't look amazing for the time being. And I generally agree with Don that I'd like to see, you know, maybe a swing high form as then we break that later in a market structure shift or come up and market structure shift this high, you know, any sort of higher high on the weekly uh, would be welcome as a sign that you can punt ETH and not feel bad about missing BTC gains or like a larger capitulation 
towards either this range low at 57s or you know something even scarier or lower for the time being it's hard to make the bullish case for ETH btc it's been trending down for so long and sort of just breaking and retesting levels so until you see something that you like which for me tends to be either a failed breakdown reach high time frame support or some sort of market structure shift um unless you have a very clear and short-term technical setup it's hard to justify uh, eth over btc as far as altcoins go i haven't found them terribly exciting uh, generally speaking, if we look at some of the big names or the big movers among the higher caps, uh, I think the halving risk with Litecoin is on the higher side now, that there's a real likelihood that the market has already done all, ha enjoyed all the upside that's to be had from the halving. Uh, and from here, it's just going to be sort of sell the news pressure more than anything. Uh, even technically, this weekly close is a bit rough because it initially closed through all the breakout highs uh, and then closed back below. So someone really happy to sell uh, their Litecoin at over 100. And even if you look at it from a purely levels point of view, if we take this, you know, pre breakdown range low, uh, you come to the same conclusion, support, resistance, resistance, close above, close below. That's a failed breakout. So uh, nothing terribly compelling on Litecoin for the time being. Uh, if we take a look at Solana, which was also uh, putting in work, if you will, um, it has it had a good reaction from this weekly level. I don't know if we talked about it on Altcoin Thursdays eons ago. That's a nice reaction. Uh, but you want to see a market structure shift on this on the weekly time frame, because for the time being, um, this consolidation broke down with the SEC candle uh, retraced to the origin of the dump, which is here. Uh, and hasn't made a higher high yet, and that's a sort of local level of resistance. If you're going to be making arguments for strength on this thing, uh, you want to see at least a higher high through the pre-SEC uh, candle, uh, and then the argument becomes uh, retests of other levels. So at least the range high at 26, and maybe starts pushing into some of these older summer levels uh, closer to 30. But for the time being, this is a bit tricky because it's just retesting the origin of the dump, and that tends to be uh, resistance more often than not, which is kind of worth bearing in mind. I will also mention that Sol BTC, as Don uh, said on the show, doesn't look amazing for the time being. It certainly looks uh, better than before after the last couple of weeks, uh, but nothing, uh, you know, terribly trend reversing yet i mean if you just look at the trajectory of this thing it's got a lot of work to do trend and market structure wise uh, to be compelling over btc so that's that's pretty tricky uh, a lot of the other names like lido etc have been fairly choppy uh, maybe i'm missing some amazing altcoin action but honestly from my view of the daily and the weekly it doesn't look like i'm missing a whole lot um op did that do anything interesting uh not really yeah I, i'm just not seeing it to be honest guys but feel free to correct me i could be wrong leave me a comment on um stuff that moves or stuff that you've been trading i can take a look uh, it could be that my watch list is dated or i'm just ignorant uh but generally speaking for a weekly show uh altcoins i mean ETH, ETH is at resistance ETH btc looks weak and a lot of these just haven't done much uh, bnb is up four percent today more launchpad news uh, but there's just a weird game of chicken going on it feels like uh based on this sort of 210 210 220 level uh, which is quite big. And I think a lot of the market is sort of fairly worried that if BNB dumps through this level, there isn't a ton of structure built up after these mega three impulsive bull market weeks. And the market is also using BNB as a sort of proxy measurement, if you will, right or wrong, for Binance's health. Uh, the sort of speculation being that if BNB breaks down, dumps, etc., uh, that's being done by insiders or employees who hold large numbers of BNB and therefore that be indicative of some more serious regulatory action. Uh, you know, you can assess the merits of those arguments for yourselves, uh, but just generally, I think this is worth, one worth having on your watch list uh, in case something kooky happens. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have to say for this episode of Monday Markets. Uh, nothing, f qu quick sort of summary of legacy. Uh, nothing new. Uh, we're still in a tricky area as far as higher time frame uh, S&P goes, where we, we're, we're trading right around the midpoint of this higher time frame range. Uh, generally speaking, you know, big area because I mean, you can break it down to three levels. It doesn't really matter. But contextually, the reason this is important is because while all of this action was happening, uh, crypto was chopping and not doing anything. So crypto finally sort of offered a bit of a move uh, with the S&P being at uh, or around high time frame resistance. So even if this thing sort of moderately pulls back to one of its breakout levels or whatever else, um, if the move is big enough, it'll probably spill over into crypto to some extent, or at least it's just another headwind to consider. So yeah, uh, that's all I've got basically. Uh, BTC, 30K is fair value. We seem to have fixed it. Above it, it gets sold. Below it, it gets bought. Uh, worth watching who's being aggressive and are they being rewarded? That will inform your next trades. Uh, for ETH, 
The weekly 1930 level still seems pertinent and your shorter term trading range is between sort of 1910 and the 1800-ish support cluster, which we outlined earlier and I'm outlining now. Um, at the moment, it's diddling in the middle, so not interesting, but those are your uh, relative extremities. ETH BTC still looks weak. Altcoins, I could be an ignoramus, but don't seem terribly interesting apart from uh, watching BNB uh, to see that level get defended. Uh, legacy still resistance-ish, uh, but nothing impulsive on the higher time frames yet. That's it. Hopefully it was helpful. As always, brought to you by Wu. If you enjoy these, leave a like before you leave. Leave a comment if you have something to say. Sign up to WooX if you think it's worth having another exchange to sort of spread your counterparty risk and try it out and punt and take part in some competitions. Or don't. Um, that's all. Thank you and goodbye.